1830s were turbulent. Land, the goal not only of the honest, but also of the unscrupulous. And nowhere did men think of wealth in terms of acres more violently than along the Mississippi. Get him, any way we can. Maybe you won't mind telling me what this is all about. Why don't you go ahead and finish him off? Take his life. You and your thieving brother have taken everything else we've got. My brother reason? You're wrong, man. He's in the land business up north of Champion. Yeah, Bowie and Bowie land office. Reason Bowie and Jim Bowie. Ain't that right? Well, I got some money in it. He runs it. He did run it. How do you mean, did? He got just what he deserved. Exactly what you're gonna get. He was shot last week. Shot? Reason? Yeah, shot the thieving land grabber. He's dead. that you can walk around. And put your feet up here. Oh. I just can't keep this boy old. in this chair. Well, I don't you know. feed me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worry myself sick about Mama. I grieve about you for 50 miles. I ride a good horse into the ground. I get back home. What are you doing? You're sitting here eating rhubarb pie. I'm hungry. Now look out. It's hot. Grabby. Well, I was told you were shot and killed. Well, he was shot, and it's just God's mercy that he's not dead. You quit peeking on him, the poor boy. If you were so worried about him, why don't you do something about his good name? Yeah, now, wait a minute. What's this all about? Well, Jim, we're in trouble, plenty of trouble. Now, listen, you let me tell him. You're not supposed to talk. Jim, I want you to listen. Yeah? Reason here almost sold off the whole track when this fella... Do pray. Yeah, do pray. And he came along with a prior title to the whole shebang. I thought you got it from the government. Well, I did. But he had a land grant from some old French king or other. Well, why can't we just refund all their money? And then we can recover from the government. How are you going to recover his good name and yours and mine? These poor settlers are being turned off of their land and they're blaming us. Why, some of them even been burned out. And one man's wife and little boy were killed. And they're claiming that we're swindlers, thieves, and murderers. I just can't see how this could happen. Any reason? Didn't you get advice from a lawyer? Well, sure. Judge Coford. Who? Judge Jonas Coford. From Kentucky? Well, I don't know where he's from. He didn't say. He wouldn't. You know him, Ma? Yeah, Mama. Uh, aren't we related to some Cofords? Why didn't you tell me you went to him? Why? Because ever since I come home, you shush uh, me every reason, time I... Uh, reason. Was he a good lawyer? Well, he had an office full of clients. Drives a new carriage. He just bought the, the old Anderson plantation. Well, he must be a good lawyer. Yeah, Mama. Isn't he a cousin of yours? He certainly is not. Grandmother Hutchison, she, her sister married Ed McGreevy, and they begat Sophie and Madge, and Madge married Ella Hugh Coford, and they begat... <laughs> Well, all right, is my second cousin once removed. Ah. I never told you this before. Minnie, go out and see if the wash is dry. His grandfather, Ezra Coford, sold wooden nutmegs. 
And his father was a horse thief. And before this Jonas Coford was a lawyer, he was immoral. He's as slick as a boiled eel. <laughs> Jim Bowie, if you don't stop that laughing at me, I'm going to take the broom to you. Ma, I'm not laughing at you. And you just see that you don't. You go up there and see that Jonas Coford and straighten this out and take care of those poor people. If it's the last thing you ever do. We're boys, and I'm proud to be a boy. And if it takes every last cent we got before some other people get her, do you hear? Yes, Mama, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go. Well, what are you standing around for, that Jonas Kofa's in champion? Go up there and fix it. Mmm, man, it's good pie. All right. Well, just tell me one thing. Before he was a lawyer, how was he a moral? He was a play actor. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Boy, Elvie's son. Admirable woman, Elvie. So stern, so dutiful, so upright. <laughs> uh, she's well, your dear mother? Uh, yes, thank you. Tolva, well, of course, she's mighty upset right now about my brother. Oh, and uh, he would be uh, a reason boy. He was a client of yours. Reason boy is your brother? Well, uh, why didn't he say so? Oh, but he's the one who just passed on. Most unfortunate affair. Please accept my condolences. Thank you, but they're a little premature. I just left Reason back home at Opelousas. He was in the kitchen eating rhubarb pie. I'm delighted to hear that. One shouldn't trust the veracity of rumor. Well, who can you trust these days? Not even a government deed, it looks like. Regrettable. Regrettable situation. Who would have believed that Reason's deed would be superseded by a prior title from a Bourbon king? Yeah. It's got us real curious. Sure like to see that French grant. You should see it, James. I may call you James, may I not? That's my name. Well, you should see it immediately. Your mind won't be at rest until you do see it. Mine wouldn't. Why should yours? All right, short me. Well, now, I'm afraid I can't do that, James. Unhappily, it's not in my possession. I'll try to arrange it for you. How? Well, by speaking to the man who has it. Monsieur Armand Dupre. Oh, you'll be reluctant, naturally, but I think I can persuade him. I'll say, it's only fair, monsieur. The boys are fine people. They won't like this blot on their scutcheon. They'll want proof of their mistake. We sure do. And you shall have it. I'll go at once. It's just a mile out the river road. My carriage, please. Monsieur Dupre bought the old Kyle plantation. Yeah, I understand. Uh, you just bought the old Anderson place. <laughs> yeah, great stroke of luck, James. An old aunt of mine in Albany, New York, died and left me quite a legacy. Most unexpected, but not, shall we say, unwelcome. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, you're at the inn, I suppose. Yes. I'll be in touch with you before the day is up. I'll be on my way as soon as I revise this deposition. Before you revise the deposition, cousin, I'm uh, kind of in a hurry. Of course. This is nothing that can't wait. My Panama boy. Well, this has certainly been a pleasure to meet you, cousin James. It's been mutual, cousin Jonas. In fact, it's uh, so mutual, I think I'll just go along with you. you I mean... You will? <laughs> well, splendid. And on the way, I'd sure like to hear some of the stories about your early days as a play actor. Ah, oh, my days as a thespian. Yes, sir, I was indeed the poor player who frets and struts his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Well, dog, my cat. You want to inspect the French grant, do you? I insist on it, Monsieur Dupre. Well, there's no reason why not. You will find it not only a valuable document, but actually a work of art. Oh, good morning, my dear. Forgive me, I did not know you had guests. Oh, please, Marcella, you know Judge Crawford. This is Monsieur Bowie. Judge Crawford, Mr. Bowie. Ma'am. You wish to see me? It is of no importance. Oh, but it is. Speak freely, my dear. Oh, yes, you wanted some money. Was that not it? Yes, if you please, Armand. 
Women never seem to have enough bangles and bows. And, and largesse to the poor? Yes, that too. <laughs> when I married my dear wife, gentlemen, she was the widow of a marquis. And she has never forgotten it. One moment, my dear. I shall feel your empty purse. No doubt I have been too open-handed with my charities. But these poor settlers, evicted from their homes and forced to move on, God knows where, they have touched my heart. We can understand that, ma'am. Here is your money, my dear Marcella. And now we must get to business, hmm? <laughs> Perhaps there will be another occasion for them to hear of your past glories. <laughs> And now, Monsieur Bowie, your problem. Here is the grant. I trust you will handle it carefully. It is beginning to show its age, as who is not in these hectic times, huh? <laughs> <laughs> is that not an excellent likeness of His Majesty? I can't blame you for being proud of this, Monsieur. It's a real handsome document. Not to speak of its, uh, its other value. You are a connoisseur, monsieur. Well, Cousin Jonas, I guess there's only one thing for reason of me to do. That's to take action against the government, selling us land it didn't own. You are also a philosopher. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Cousin Jonas. Uh, thank you, Monsieur Dupre. We're very grateful for your, uh, courtesy. You've been most welcome, gentlemen. Good day, monsieur. service, cousin. Uh, drive Mr. Boy wherever he wishes to go. I'll drive myself. Anybody want to hang the real thing? You ain't welcome here. No Bowie is. To pray kick my family off the land we bought from your brother. There's my wife and kids. Where are we gonna go? Anybody that needy? I'll stake the food. I come here to try and straighten things out, and that goes for you too. First thing I did this morning was go to the bank and establish credit here. I told them I'd stand behind loans for any of you needy settlers who had bought land from boy and boy. So all you gotta do is go to the hey, bank and ask hey, the... Hey, look at this, counterfeit. I went to the bank and it's no good. Where'd you get it? From that, that woman, the one that's been helping us out around here. Mrs. Dupre? There she comes. That's Mrs. Dupre. Well, that's her trouble. Oh, hello, Mrs. Neeland. I was looking for you. Don't touch it. Don't take that money. Take that counterfeit money out of here. Haven't we got enough trouble? Counterfeit? Ma'am. Uh, you men, uh, go into the bank and get your loans. I'll take care of this. Move on away. Madame Dupre, may I see that? Is this the money your husband gave you? Yes. He might have spared me this last indignity. You sure couldn't tell it was counterfeit. Looks good to me. Tell me, do you ever see that uh, French land grant that he showed me? The one that uh, gives him title to the land? Yes. I mean, did you ever read it? Did you ever study it closely? No, not closely. Oh. No, he wouldn't be. Well, if this is, why not the grant? Those poor people. Don't cry, man. Now, listen to me. Here, take this. I need your help. I help you? About the grant. How? Well, there was a picture on it. The king, uh, Louis the something, uh... There were many Louis. Louis the 16th, I think this one was. 
Wasn't he the one who uh, kind of lost his head? He did indeed, along with his poor wife, Marie Antoinette. Do you know when that was? I mean, uh, what year? It's a date I well remember. It was the year I was born, 1793. But why do you ask? Well, this King Louis. Do you know how old he was when he, uh, when he was... Uh... Uh, guillotined? Uh, about 40, 39 to be exact, I believe. I see, and he died in 93. So let's see, he was born in 39 from 93. Uh, he was born in 1754. Mm, that sounds right, but why? But the date on that land grant was 1765. He could only have been 11 years old at that time. Yes. Well, don't you see? The picture was one of a fully grown man with his name on it and his signature underneath. But this is so stupid of him. He knows better than that. No, it is not stupid at all. It was deliberate. I don't think I understand. Of course it was deliberate. He makes a glaring error in history and dates on the assumption that no one here, yourself, for instance, will know the difference. And that Americans are all ignorant backwoodsmen. And from this, his mean little soul is fed. From this, he feels superior. Oh, the arrogance, the conceit of him. Don't, ma'am, don't. There's some way out of this. I don't know. I have prayed that there might be, but... Well, I, I don't want to intrude on your privacy. I mean, uh, you don't have to answer this if you don't want it. Please, Mr. Bowie, I have no secrets from you now. Well, do you want to see this man, this uh, husband of yours, get what he deserves? After this? Yes, Mr. Bowie. Well, then, I think the best thing is for you to invite me back to your house this afternoon as a sort of uh, surprise for him. I'll bring Judge Coford. Are you sure you want to do this? Don't underrate Armand, Mr. Bowie. He is a dangerous man. So am I, sometimes, Madame Dupre. Then come to tea at four. Tea at four. This has been a day of revelations indeed. When you were here this morning, Monsieur, I had no idea you were the famous Jim Bowie. I doubt I'll be in the history books, Monsieur. Oh, but of course you will. Or you should be, certainly. Did you not invent a new knife? A small accomplishment. Oh, but not at all. I'm greatly interested in knives. It is also a speciality of mine. <laughs> May I see one of yours? Oh. But magnificent. <laughs> My dear wife does not like me to discuss the subject. It offends her aristocratic sensitivity. But I maintain that cold steel is the only civilized weapon. The poison of the Borgias was one-sided to a cowardly degree. And the gun, the gun is nothing more than a shattering explosion, robbing the duelist of the excitement of quiet personal combat. Steel. Steel, monsieur. Silent, deadly, exquisitely tempered, is the only true weapon. Primitive, some may say, but I doubt that the future will develop anything more civilized. May I have some more tea, please, Herbert? It was so well balanced, I could not resist seeing it in flight. Where'd you pick up your liking for the blade, monsieur? Abroad. Eight years I studied the dagger with such masters as Gino Lardi, the Venetian, Pedro Pizarro, the Portuguese. Herbert, pour Monsieur Bowie some brandy. Uh, no, no, thank you. I have to be riding back to town. Lawsuits take time, and I haven't any to waste. Oh, but I want you to see my blade, monsieur. Please don't go. Herbert, pour me brandy. My own dagger. Really a poignard. Copied after those used in the highlands of Scotland. Thank you, Herbert. <laughs> the music of the wine glass and the music of death are almost identical, are they not, monsieur? Herbert. Take an orange from that basket and stand up against the wall. Please don't let me, please. Armand, you know how it terrifies him. It does the same for me. Hold it against your cheek in the usual way. Please, Armand. But I've only had one brandy, my dear. Armand, Herbert. don't do this awful thing again. As you see, monsieur, I lay my forearm flat on the table. Then I get my blade well fixed between my thumb and my index finger. No, Mr. Dupree. 
Then I get my target well fixed within my range of view. Stop, Armand! Once I have the target engraved in my mind, then I can throw with my eyes closed. Please observe. You will hardly see my wrist move. I throw the knives in this house, monsieur. You can go, Herbert. You have offended me. It was intentional. Why? Because you've offended me. How? By having the stupidity to think that I was stupid. Are you not stupid, monsieur? Maybe. But I was able to figure out that Louis XVI was only 11 years old on the date of that land grant. Brilliant. That grant's a forgery, Monsieur Dupre. Just like some of the currency you've been making. Who's been putting it into circulation for you, anyway? Cousin Jonas, we never did have any kin in Albany, New York, did we? Yeah. In fact, you bought the old Anderson place with some of this money, didn't you? Where'd you pass it? Well, I found gambling houses, the best outlets. In Memphis, Natchez, New Orleans. Well, Mama's gonna be very upset when she hears about this. Very upset. I think you can be excused, Marcella. I am not going, Armand. I do not think you will like what you will have to see. And what will she have to see? He intends to murder you, Mr. Bowie. So, the moment has finally come, huh? Yes, Armand, at last. Watch him carefully, Mr. Bowie. He spoke one truth today. He did study the dagger under Lardy and Pizarre. They were his fellow inmates in prison in France, where he served seven and one half years for forgery. That makes certain that no one but me must leave here alive. Now, this whole matter can be solved, Mr. Dupre, if you'll just come to town and make a clean breast of this whole affair. Quiet, you fatuous spoonbag! Keep your fingers away from that steel, monsieur. But is it the only weapon in the house? I have no gun. I told you the sound offends me. Thank God, monsieur! I don't want to kill you, Dupre. Judge Crawford is next. I'm saving the Marquesa till last. It will be interesting to see how she will die. Huh? You can drop that knife from the Scottish Highlands. Go and drop it. Now get up. So it's all cleaned up now. Every one of those settlers back on his land, and the rest of it sold. Bowie and Bowie are out of business. For the time being. Much obliged, Jim. Well, I think I'm going to bed. No, you're not. Not before you tell us what happened to that poor Marquesa. Well, Madame Dupre? Well, she bought the old Anderson place. She's doing fine. Oh, no, Jim, you got that mixed up. Judge Coford bought the Anderson place. Yeah, yeah, but he decided to sell real cheap just before he took the steamboat north. Said he was going back in the medicine show business. I can't get through my head is why I didn't shoot you. Yeah, it's just what I asked him. What'd he say? He said, uh, shoot you? Why, James, you're kinfolk. I couldn't shoot the son of my own first cousin. Why, that's a fib and a story and a bare-faced lie. Now, Grandmother Hutchison, her sister married Edna Creevy, and they begat Sophie and Madge, and Madge, yes, she married Eric U. Colford, and then, no, come, come on, Mama. Hey, and then I think it was Sophie who married. And here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello, everyone. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we'll be with us again next week for another exciting adventure in the life of Jim Boy. Adventure in man. Adventure in man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He roamed the wilderness on the 
away from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold, adventuring man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man.